Now that's the gap I was looking for. There's play in this hinge over here. That's what's caused to get to go that way. So we might just have to do that in the hood adjustment or the hood latch. I can't decide if I like this without the Dodge emblem. Yeah, right there. For me, I'm pointing way off over here, but for you guys, it's right there. I kind of like it without that, honestly. I'd say that's pretty, pretty A-OK. -okay. It's about what it was before, so minus the uh, clear coat peel. The only thing we've gained is, well, so we've lost the uh, Chrysler or Dodge emblem. We've gained that little nick, which I, I've got a touch it pin. I'll just make green. And we've uh, we've gained the, uh, what is that, the heat shield under there, which is probably what caused that clear coat to peel. I almost guarantee it. I don't know what happened to the heat shield. It was there. Um, I took it off at some point for some reason, and it never went back on, it looks like. That's not bad. That's not bad. i got to make sure I keep a hold of that, because this is the original hood. It did have a... PCM flash in 2002, so I gotta put that in my storage locker. This one will probably get repainted at some point in the future. That's not bad. It's a little high in this corner, which means the whole hinge has to be adjusted down, which I'm not gonna do right now. And I was able to shim that one up. I probably could have just moved the hinge up. Probably would have been fine. But this came off of that. Uh, was it a 97, 98, 99? It was a Chrysler. Town Country LXI that we also pulled the rear hatch off for green bean over there. And we also pulled, we pulled the hood and I pulled it for this one. What I should do is take this hood, put it on green bean, take that hood, put it on here, because that's the nicer hood, but it doesn't really matter now. They're both, they're both got their fair share of dings and dents. And... Yeah, it looks pretty good. But we're about to take her on a road trip to uh, Lake Superior. Go drive along the coast, stay up there for a few days where it's cooler. A few days off work too. Uh, I wanted to get this hood on here so when I took some shots I got a nicer looking van. Cause that, that clear coat peel really bothered me. It just happened this spring. And uh, yeah, no, no it doesn't have it, it's been reversed. Yeah, I like that hood. I'll take it through a car wash, I'll get a couple pictures, I'll probably show you guys. Probably include them wherever I include this, but yeah. All right, so we're working on string bean today. And uh, she just rolled over. Let me show you here. Sorry, careful, careful. Get you up here. String bean, on the way home from work, just rolled 210,000 miles. And what that means is approximately, and we're rounding to the nearest 10,000 miles, I've driven her 30,000 miles. Actually, it's like closer to 27, but we're going to be round and do it at 210. Um, so, she's getting a lot of change at roughly 5,000 miles or so. And also, we're going to do the first second, technically, second transmission fluid change since I've owned it. And I've been told, or I've learned, you want to do these 41TEs 30,000 miles. At least that's what I'm gonna do. So, but I was also I was just under there. I was doing a look around, you know, just looking at everything, making sure I don't see anything abnormal, and everything looks status quo except that I don't have the cover up here. I have one to put on it. I may or may not put it on today. Oh, water pump's been replaced. That's got what thirty thousand miles on twenty-seven. Doesn't wobble or anything. This coolant hose is new. Feels good. 
I don't see any like major power steering leaks. Idler pulley, new tensioner up there. A sway bar links are all new. A suspension's all new, new struts, um, assemblies and everything. Uh, new ball joints that look fine. Uh, sway bar bushings are new, those look okay when I was back there. I got a little bit of a transmission leak coming from the pan from the last time I did it. Um, there's one thing I remember here. Uh, a couple of these bolts were stripped out. Um, so we got some heckery going on here. Uh, this right here, I believe, if I remember, is a really long bolt. And I used it to catch some threads further up, but it was too long. So I think I put a bunch of washers on it. Oh, God. Um, that one is a longer bolt with a washer on it. That one looks like a longer bolt, but it was through bolted, so that's fine. Yeah, um, I think, if I remember, this was back when I was actually trying to uh, torque these to spec. And a uh, little quarter-inch torque wrench uh, sent these guys for a ride before I learned my lesson. And I don't use a torque wrench on these pans anymore. I uh, snug them up by hand, and I've got a good feel for it. And the ones I've done since then don't... Uh, I haven't done that again. Let's just say I haven't done that again. <laughs> now you learn. You learn eventually. Um, what I do see is it's a coolant drip right there. And I have been losing coolant ever so slowly. And I wonder if we... Can we turn flash on so I can see and you can see? You can't use while using ultra-wide lens. Okay. There. Now we can both kind of see... It looks like a little bit of a leak up there. Is that coming from the head gasket? Maybe. Possibly. Around the edge there, the cooling jacket, or is it coming from above there? But it looks like an ever so small drip. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, um, this this girl's had a slow coolant leak. Like I just keep an eye on it, top it off. Not enough to cause concern, but uh, that might be a culprit. The yeah, other culprit is up there at the rear cooler lines that are they're starting to get pretty pretty rough looking. I need to start looking at uh, replacing those. So, but it's not like this stuff keeps getting worse. This does not get driven in the winter. Like, if you look at all the new suspension parts up there, they're all shiny and everything. Um, not any progressive rust that's gotten any worse here. If you want to get a good under looking at the vehicle, it's not too bad under here. A little bit. Kind of probably giving you a headache now. But it's not terrible by any means. Um, that's something to look into up there. Let me see if I can see anything from up top. I doubt based on where it is. But you never know. Otherwise, otherwise it looks fine. Yeah, like I said, slow trans leak. This is like a seep. So I, I don't think I've ever had to add transmission fluid to it in 30,000 miles. Maybe a half a quarter or so, but... I, I honestly don't remember the last time I added any to it or that it seemed low, but it's got a small seep to it. But uh, we gotta well, we gotta change the oil first, then we'll change the transmission fluid. That's where we're that's where we're at right now. Okay, so size of my um plug is I think it's not metric, but the 16 mil fits it pretty good. There we go. Got it crack loose. Notice how I did that with one hand. They don't need to be million, you know, foot pounds tight, but apparently I need to go at it with the wrench just a little more. My ratcheting wrench here. There, now I'll still spin it by hand. Let's see if I can do this without getting any on my hands. Naturally, I'm doing it on the side that I don't have a glove on. So I'm wearing a glove on my left hand here. 
Yeah, mission successful. Yeah, need to be changed. Dark color oil. Oh, I dripped some on there. What? Not bad. Looks all right. And the vehicle is warm right now. Um, it's yeah, been 35 minutes since they drove it home. Or pulled into the driveway, let's say. Not too bad, though. You can see a little bit of amber color in it still. I think it's got 4,000-something miles on it. Starting to get the stream here. Turn that just a little bit. That should be about five quarts or so. Well, we'll see. Because I'll dump this back into the uh, the jugs it came out of, and we'll see if we're short any. Shouldn't be. I think I just added half a quart to it, uh, like two days ago. Two days and like 500 miles ago. Anyway, now. I'll go with that. That right there would probably be tight enough. But we're going to snug that one up just a little bit more. that was a broken tooth nice all right oil's done well not done but you know what i mean so now i got you with my glove hand should be able to twist that see that look at that and it didn't leak a drop that is all the tighter they need to be this is where we make a mess Even have that aimed right. There we go. And now I'm going to put the new filter on and top it up with five quarts of oil. All right, new filters up. I've got the mileage and the date written on it. And I also, it's still dripping a little bit of oil. I wiped this down a little bit, but uh, added a little bit to it, just so it had some in it already. And also, you know, you wipe a little bit of oil around that rubber gasket as you put it on. Then you always make sure you got your old gasket here, or at least that it's not up there. You don't need to have that fun. So. No filters in. It's essentially hand tight. Now, I think I got the hood popped already. Yep, I do. If I can find the latch. There. You want to get that for me? Thanks. Be helpful. Ow. Okay, we don't. Oh, God. There we go. Now we're winning. There we go. We've won. So we want to add. Little bit of oil to this old girl. Well, good news. I uh, turned you off and I poured it in just with that. Didn't do it too bad. I spilled a little bit around it, but whoops. My bad. Actually, I had it all. What it is is the uh, little seal on the end of the thing. I didn't have it all off. And at the very end, when I tipped it like this, it kind of went around the edge of that seal. And, uh, you know, 
Got a little bit on here. Anyway, just polished it up. So, <laughs> looks good. We should be able to uh, probably let's curl up. Low pressure light. So we don't have a gauge. Should build oil pressure. There it is. And we are good to go. Got to change my labels up top here, but uh, I'm gonna do the transmission first, and then I'll do all that. But uh, we should be all good to go there in the oil department. All right, onto the transmission. Got the pan all cleaned up. Well, this is gonna be fun because there's multiple size bolts, but we'll uh, we'll see what we can do here. Probably pull those first, to be honest. What do you think that is? A 13? Sure, hope so. Okay, so what do we got going on here? Let me, okay, botch start, botch start. Let's uh, try in here. There, yeah, probably, probably pull that first. Oh boy, there we go. Oh, it was in there, that's a good sign. Um, I don't remember where that one was. And all of its accessories. Anyway, uh, yeah, that's, I'm going to say, come on, I suppose it's caught in the threads that aren't very, very nice. Well, you get the idea. So, I'm going to take all these bolts out, probably leave one up here, and then leave one down here and then back this one off and let the fluid kind of drain out into the pan. And uh, slowly back them out until I drop the whole pan itself. So that's what I'm gonna do. But, uh, yeah, that's a, that's a bolt, all right. Yep, so I got all but two bolts. I got one right down here, and I got one up here. As you can see, I've got them in a nice pattern so I know where they'll go. Specifically the three that I've got, you know, weird sizes for. I got this long one goes up here. Got that one over in this corner, and then I've got that one kind of over here. The rest are all correct. They seem fine. So, uh, but yeah, that's where we're going. So we just let this little stuff keep out. It looks fluid looks okay. Doesn't look bad. Doesn't smell burnt or anything. So we're doing all right there in the transmission department. Well, there we are. I ignore the rocks and pebbles. I think I just knocked those in there pulling the pan out, but that's what we got for metal. Which I'd say that's pretty normal. That's not that bad. Uh, nothing else in the pan really. The pan's clean there's not metal shavings all over the pan or anything but just a little bit on the magnet fine shavings no chunks no nothing like that that I can tell so wipe this magnet off and send her back to work yeah that, that looks pretty good so, but fluid still got a lot of red to it it's a little darker it's not not terrible by any means all right got the pan all tightened down I found one more strip bolt here. I think that I didn't strip it this time for sure. I'll tell you that much. But I think that one was already stripped. So I got a. I think these are these are hood bolts, off of a green caravan. So uh, yeah, no, it's fitting. But uh, yeah, so because that that section strip bolt just sent that one all the way through, no problems. But otherwise, they're all all tightened down. Got a put this into the quartz and see how much fluid I need to add. 
otherwise uh, I gotta pull this cable back down now the uh, wire harness and I gotta re-zip tie that to the pan um, I noticed there was a dent right here I'm I I don't recall hitting anything but uh you never know that or it's been there I pounded that out by the way so that's all good to go now also put the magnet in the right spot I noticed it was in the it was it was up here um, it's supposed to be down here by these dimples right here on the inside, so I, I put the magnet in the right spot. I, yeah, I think it was up here, but it's in the right spot now. Otherwise, I think we're good to go, so I'm going to zip tie this, get my fluid installed, uh, I'll let you know how it goes. Alright, got the transmission fluid all changed, got the filter and uh, pan on. I uh, measured out how much fluid came out. And it pretty much came out to four quarts on the nose, so that's exactly what I dumped in it. Now we're going to take it for a test drive and then check fluid level and make sure we are within operating range. Make sure it works first. Gear. That will significantly reduce the amount you will owe if you qualify. This is not bankruptcy or a debt consolidation loan. There she goes. Guess we had to prime the old system up there. forward. First gear. Second gear. Third gear. Warmed up, up the temp, check the fluid, and uh, 